Hello everyone, Dr. Polaris here. The bears of the family Ursidae are one of the most instantly recognisable of all carnivoran mammals. With their shaggy coats, robust builds, and oddly cuddly reputation, despite some species being truly formidable beasts. Once thought to have originated in the late Eocene, in the form of the Amphicynodontids, recent studies have classified these animals as basal pinniped relatives instead, which has left the early evolution of bears as a bit of a mystery. Given that ursids are probably more basal than the pinnipeds, then we would expect to find remains of them from the late Eocene as well, although as yet none have been described. The so-called dog bears of the family Hemicyonidae are sometimes considered to be a subfamily of ursids. If this turns out to be the case, then these would be the oldest known bears, originating in the early Oligocene about 33 million years ago with the genus Cephalogale. If the dog bears are a separate family, however, then a good candidate for the most archaic true ursid would be forms such as the early Miocene Balusia, a tiny animal about the size of a raccoon. This genus was native to Eurasia between 20 and 16 million years ago, being a generalist omnivore that fed on fruit, leaves, insects, and small mammals. It possessed slender limbs and a tail that was longer than in living bears. From small and generalized ancestors such as these, all of the more recognisable modern bear groups began to diverge starting by around 20 million years ago, with the most basal being the Iluropodians, the giant panda lineage. Beyond this are the two other living subfamilies, the well-known and diverse Ursinae, and the main subject of today's video, the Tremarctines. These animals are represented today by a single genus and species, the South American Tremarctos ornatus, also known as the spectacled bear. However, in the past, this subfamily was far more diverse, being endemic to the Americas and producing some of the largest terrestrial carnivorous mammals of all time, with these being the infamous giant short-faced bears of the Pleistocene. Despite this, the origins of Tremarctinae were far more humble. It has been proposed that this lineage diverged from their ursine cousins roughly 15 million years ago and probably entered North America via the Bering Land Bridge. This can be confirmed by the presence of Aurorarctos in fossil bearing deposits dating to between 15 and 12 million years ago, which is the oldest and most basal ursine bear. If this animal was around during the Middle Miocene, then so were the oldest members of Tremarctinae, although so far none are known from such an early date. Indeed, the genus Plyonarctos first appears in the fossil record about 10 million years ago at the Pipe Creek sinkhole site in Indiana being the most ancient Tremarctine. Features uniting this group include the appearance of disproportionately shorter snouts compared with most modern bears, giving them the name short-faced. This apparent shortness is an illusion caused by the deep snouts and short nasal bones of Tremarctines when compared with ursines, meaning that they had a deeper but not a shorter face than most living bears. This trait, combined with large molars and well-developed jaw muscles, indicate that these animals may have been ancestrally herbivorous, much like the living spectacled bear, although some forms became more omnivorous later on. Plyonarctos was a successful omnivore that ranged widely across the United States during the Pliocene between 10 and 2 million years ago, with two known species, the southeastern P. edensis and the Washingtonian P. heraldum. These were comparable in size and probably lifestyle to the modern American black bear and the Asiatic black bear, respectively. Plyonarctos was joined in the southern states by Tremarctos floridanus, the so-called Florida spectacled bear. First appearing roughly 4.75 million years ago, this animal would have been very similar to its modern relative, in both appearance and in the largely herbivorous diet, but was almost twice the size with males weighing up to 300 kilograms, or about 661 pounds. Like their South American cousins, the Florida spectacled bear probably favoured tough plant material that other animals found unpalatable or difficult to break apart. This would have given it a powerful crushing bite for its size, similar to the modern giant panda, which also consumes very hard plant matter. T. floridanus remains have been found from across the United States, but, as the name suggests, are most common in Florida, with the bear clearly preferring warm and subtropical habitats. Fossils of this species have additionally been found in the Mexican state of Sonora, and also in Belize, 
which demonstrates how these animals eventually migrated into South America roughly 11,000 years ago, developing into the modern Tremarctos ornatus. T. floridanus became extinct either at the end of the Pleistocene or possibly as late as the early Holocene circa 8,000 years ago, if remains found at Devil's Den Cave in Florida are dated correctly. Its extinction was probably due to a combination of climate change and hunting by humans. Due to its North American origins and herbivorous diet, it would be easy to assume that Tremarctos was a basal member of the subfamily, although this is not the case. Phylogenetic studies have shown that it was the sister genus of the purely Central and South American Arctotherium instead, with a divergence date of about 4.1 million years ago. The oldest remains of Arctotherium, in the form of a tooth, appear to hail from the Custodlan formation of El Salvador and are dated to the late Pliocene circa 2.5 million years ago. From this ancestral stock, the genus migrated into South America after the formation of the Isthmus of Panama at around the same time, being the first bear to set foot on the continent. Due to a lack of competition, Arctotherium thrived and quickly ballooned in terms of size and mass. The oldest known South American species was A. angustidens from the early Pleistocene of Argentina, thriving between 1 million and 700,000 years ago. A truly gigantic beast that stood at least 6 feet tall at the shoulder when on all fours, and up to 13 feet when rearing up, A. angustidens was possibly the most massive terrestrial carnivorous mammal to ever live. A particularly large specimen from Buenos Aires, represented by partial right and left forelimbs belonging to an elderly and scarred male, suggests an animal that weighed up to 1,500 kilograms, or about 3,500 pounds, a mass comparable to the modern black rhino. This would have been exceptional, however, with females and most males being notably lighter. This impressive bulk could be achieved due to the very heavy build of the bear, in contrast to the similarly sized but lankier Arctodus seamus of North America. Once thought to have been a ferocious carnivore that consumed huge quantities of meat, it has more recently been hypothesized that A. angustidens was an adaptable omnivore. As found in a 2010 study by Borja Figueredo, the skull and jaws of the species were most similar to those of omnivorous forms, like the sun bear, the Asian black bear, and the North American short-faced bear Arctodus seamus. Another prehistoric species thought to have been an extremely predatory form, but has recently been reconstructed as an omnivore. Broken teeth hint that Arctotherium angustidens often chewed on bones, supporting the idea that it ate animal matter, but overall it probably had a more cosmopolitan diet, like that of modern grizzly bears. As a predator, it was an opportunist that did not exclusively rely on meat to survive, instead occasionally bullying smaller predators off of a carcass. Interestingly, all later species of Arctotherium were far smaller and less partial to eating meat, possibly due to the development of a more diverse predator guild in South America. The late Pleistocene A. tarahense, for example, appears to be an adaptable omnivore, much like modern brown bears. Weighing 400 kilograms, or roughly 881 pounds on average, this was still a large animal, comparable to a modern Kodiak bear, although was far smaller than A. angustidens. The species inhabited a wide range extending across the most southern regions of South America, dwelling in environments that were at times harsh and cold. Wear present on the teeth of A. tarahense suggests that it incorporated higher percentages of meat in its diet the further south it lived, feeding on wanakos, ground sloths or horses that were either overpowered by the bear or scavenged. This species would have competed with Smilodon populator, the large canid Ducy Scion, and the mysterious Panthera onca mesembrina in Patagonia, in addition to cougars and the canid Proto Scion further north. Although the modern spectacled bear does not hibernate, it is certainly possible that A. tarahense may have done, given the cold, dark and at times subpolar conditions in which it lived. The youngest remains of this species were found at Cueva del Puma in southern Chile and date to approximately 10,345 years ago. Meanwhile, the contemporary species A. wingi was native to the northern half of the continent, even successfully pushing into Central America. It was among the smallest of the Arctotherium species, weighing up to 150 kilograms, being in a similar size range to the living spectacled bear. In fact, this forest and scrubland dwelling animal was very similar to Tremarctos ornatus in terms of diet, 
being largely herbivorous and consuming fruits and C3 plants. However, evidence from carbon isotope studies indicate that A. wingi did occasionally include some meat in its diet, a trait that is also seen in modern Tremarctos ornatus, although this would account for less than 5% of its caloric intake. The species ranged as far north as the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico, representing a successful return to Central America in which the genus first evolved. It was possibly the youngest form of Arctotherium, with fossil material recovered from Venezuela potentially dating to 9,000 years ago, before finally succumbing to a mixture of climate change and a degree of hunting by humans. With the demise of A. wingi, the ancestors of modern spectacled bears entered South America for the first time, essentially replacing the smaller forms of Arctotherium and remaining the only bear native to the continent. In North America, a different lineage of Tremarctines thrived during the Pleistocene. This was the genus Arctodus, the so-called giant short-faced bear, and one of the most charismatic members of North America's Ice Age megafaunal mammal community. Once thought to have been a monstrous apex carnivore that ran down large herbivores such as horses, bison and young mammoths, Recent studies have strongly challenged this idea, instead suggesting that Arctodus was a flexible omnivore, with a diet that varied by location, much like modern brown bears. The earliest members of the genus first appeared during the early Pleistocene, about 2.5 million years ago, although phylogenetic studies indicate that it diverged from other Tremarctines roughly 5 million years ago. The oldest species, Arctodus pristinus, was native to the eastern and southern United States, ranging south into central Mexico. With a relatively gracile build and wide snout, with laterally positioned eyes, this bear could reach maximum weights of about 500 kilograms, although this was exceptional, with an average of 250 kilograms or so being likely. Not much information about this animal exists online, being heavily overshadowed by its more massive relative, Arctodus simus. This species first appears in the fossil record about 1.1 million years ago, and can be distinguished from A. pristinus, not only by size, but by a shorter snout, more robust teeth and longer limbs. It has been theorised that this giant short-faced bear emerged due to the extinction of the previously dominant Agriotherium and the bone-crushing dog Borophagus, allowing Arctodus to expand into more open habitats. The length of its limbs, as well as its size and predatory behaviour, have been somewhat overstated in paleomedia and in popular science literature. In reality, the limbs were not proportionally longer than those of other bears, being an illusion created by the animal's relatively shorter back and torso proportions, a trait shared with modern hyenas. Large males could reach 6 feet tall at the shoulder and weighed up to 1,000 kilograms or 2,200 pounds. Indeed massive, but still significantly lighter than Arctotherium angustidens due to its lankier build. Also, Arctodus was not a hypercarnivore, but an opportunistic omnivore with a diet composed mostly of plant matter, although it would not hesitate to overpower herbivores or steal kills from Smilodon fatalis or dire wolves. It is also important to note that this bear was one of the rarer North American carnivorans of the Pleistocene seemingly living at low population densities over very large ranges, spanning from central Beringia and Alaska to the central highlands of Mexico. As a result, A. Seamus had very low genetic diversity, which would have made it vulnerable to rapid environmental changes, unlike the sympatric brown bear, which were able to bolster their numbers with fresh migrations from Eurasia. The final confirmed occurrences of Arctodus in North America date to approximately 12,000 years ago, with a variety of explanations put forward for their demise, which include the extinction of megafaunal herbivores, food shortages, or competition with humans and brown bears. However, none of these are considered likely by modern paleontologists. Of the factors discussed, Vegetation shifts in the latest Pleistocene may have been particularly unfavourable for Arctodus simus, due to a reduction of quality foraging for subsistence. For example, on Vancouver Island circa 13,500 years ago, vegetation changed rapidly from open woodlands with abundant pine to increasingly closed forests with shade-tolerant spruce, mountain hemlock and red alder. These changes, effective by 12,450 years ago, 
point towards cool and moist conditions during the younger drier stadial, closed forests continued to expand into the early Holocene, with western hemlock becoming dominant. Even though the bear was not restricted to open areas and could occur in different environments, the timing of the regional shift from an open pine woodland habitat to a densely forest vegetation implies that these changes contributed to the local extirpation of Arctodus simus, along with many other megafaunal mammals. Combined with low genetic diversity, this would spell doom for the giant short-faced bear, with a few of its cousins in the genus Arctotherium persisting for a few thousand years longer in parts of South America. However, by the early Holocene, the modern spectacled bear was the last Tremarctine, and a modest reminder of the most massive ursines that ever lived. Thanks for watching everyone. The next episode we'll be covering the endemic South American canids and their arrival on the continent during the Great American Interchange. I hope you all enjoy the holiday season, and I'll see you again at the end of the month. Cheerio.